All right, welcome to part two of the character overviews for Psychic Force 2012. And on this part, we're going to do all the Noah characters, starting off with Carlo, uh, one of the two uh, the two new twins. All right, so Carlo. Let's see, Carlo has a pretty whatever uh, light attack. It has you see, it has a bit of start up there see but no it's a light it is what it is uh, his strong attacks actually quite good it's called hydro spiral it comes out quite fast it's also pretty safe all things considered and it's actually his best uh his, his best ender for combos um speaking of that his bread and butter is actually the weakest in the game it is light let me get it for you. It is light strong, and then hydro spiral. Uh, remember to combo into your strong. You need to do forward, forward strong. Let's turn on. What am I doing? And to turn on input. Okay. Yeah. So it's light strong, forward, forward strong. All right, so Hydro Spiral, one of the interesting things about it is the further away you do it, it actually grows in size. See right there that it becomes a bigger projectile as it reaches the opponent. But because of how um, how quickly it recovers, it's actually pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. All right, moving on from there, we have Hydro Trap. This is a counter that, let's see, this is a counter that Carlo has. That will counter physical attacks. So unlike Patty, come on, buddy, hit me. There you go. Three hundred fifty damage is not bad. Uh, that being said, it's a lot easier to counter projectiles than it is to counter uh, physical attacks in this game. But it will beat out, I think, throws, uh, you know, up-close attacks, or any physical uh, psi attack. Moving up from there, we've got Half-Circle Light. And this is kind of the cornerstone of his game plan. This move is called Aqua Javelin. And you'll notice it doesn't actually interact with the opponent, right? It has a two follow-ups. The first follow-up is L, Light. And you'll see there that it causes a line that traces back to Carlo. And you can aim this, actually. And anytime you do the follow-up, it'll always trace a straight line between the Javelin and, and Carlo. The other follow-up is with Strong. This one creates a line that is perpendicular to Carlo. And this move is actually... It can be kind of hard to deal with. Uh, but... It's, it goes to show he's more of like a space control kind of character. Uh, it is quite safe, I believe, though. But you need to understand that Carlo is vulnerable during the entire instance of him using the move until he lets it out. Alright, so moving on from there, we have... Back forward, strong. Back forward, strong. It's sort of his version of, of, a, sort of like a burst move. Uh, you'll notice that next to him, there's a bit of a, you know... The actual, like, hitbox isn't immediately around him. So, there is a bit of a blind spot there where he can get hit. But, you know, despite its somewhat slow startup, it does have its uses. And it does have a bit more range than other burst moves. Alright. Half Circle Strong is his anti-zoning tool. It's called Aqua Gimlet, I believe. And it can hit up to three times. But usually you're going to get two hits on the wall. But that's still very good damage. Uh, but yeah, this move itself will beat out projectiles in front. If you think the opponent's going to go for something, you know, you throw this out. It'll it'll beat out anything that's coming directly at you. It's also quite safe. So definitely an important tool. Uh, and the last two moves he has are the Bubble Mine. Which is a projectile that follows your opponent around. And... You can use it, you know, it, it, it's a space control tool mostly, if you get your opponent in it. 
it actually deals damage, I believe, while they're in the bubble. Uh, but it's very unlikely that they actually get caught by it. But it is something that they have to deal with while it's on the field. You can only do one at a time, so... It definitely is a move that he has to use. But it's, you know, it, it's not the strongest thing. And finally, Carlos Super. Which I believe is called Serpent Crash. Uh, does 280 damage. It has quite a bit of startup. You're probably not going to hit this outside of like a really big whiff punish. But it's there and it has its uses. Uh, I guess if I was if I was to describe Carlo, he's a very safe zoner kind of character. Although that being said, he does have a specific trait to his normals that stand out, which is that his normals have pretty good range up close. So you'll see there. One. That kick is basically his jab, right? But you're still in like you're still far out enough if you space it properly. Where if they if they try to barrier it, you can get a free uh you know, you can get a free barrier break. That's assuming you have the 50% meter. Like right there. Uh so it's just something to note that he he can he can actually go into his bread and butter from a little bit further out than most characters do. I mean, obviously, I don't play Carlo, so I'm not the best at spacing for it. But yeah, remember that his his, uh, his bread and butter doesn't do the best. It's the weakest in the game at 199 damage. Um, <clears throat> but you're going to be doing more about, like, space control. You're going to be doing more of, like, zoning, using this to, to sort of mess with them. Um, this by itself is a really fast, like, good move. So yeah. I described Carlo, he revolves around a lot around safety, sort of compact play, basic zoning, although he does have a few things up close he can use. And, you know, you have the counter, but you will die if they read it or they don't do anything, because it's very easily punishable. Alright, and moving on, we're going to check out Regina next, Carlo's sister. Alright, my favorite character in the game, uh, Carlo's sister Regina. I don't know, I like her a lot. She reminds me a bit of Shermie from KOF. Uh, she, I guess if I had to sum her, sum her up, she's a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. She has some good close-up stuff and some good far-range stuff, but she doesn't really excel at any one range. Uh, that being said, she has a really good bread and butter. I'll show it to you right now. Hold on, that's not it. Although that is a long-range confirm. There you go. 290 damage for that is not bad at all. Uh, and that is completely guaranteed, and you can buffer that special uh, during the during the last. So the last two hits of that uh, of that string is one button. It's light, light, strong. So let's go into her moves. She has a very standard light attack. Good startup. You know, travels fine. Doesn't have like any anything notable. Unlike Carlo, her normals are you know. Pretty standard, just a little swipe with her jab that advances her. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so her strong attack, pretty similar to Burns actually. It's called Flame Shot. Does 200 damage base. It's actually more damage than his, because I think his does uh, 180. And her strong attack, Flame Shot, by the way, that's what it's called. You can hold the button down and let it go. To split it up into five smaller uh, shots. These can be uh, neutral dash through. So it is, you know, it is important to notice. But if your opponent, uh, you know, if they don't think you're going to do it, and they're, they're just going to have to block the hits, and it will catch people trying to, you know, trying to dash to the left or right of, of the uh, actual projectile. So it does have its uses, but it is a bit of a gimmick. Unfortunately, if you hold the button down, Regina, as you can see, when she lets go, she brings her hand up, right? It kind of does kind of a JoJo pose because she has to be fabulous, um, and she's pretty vulnerable the whole time. So it's it's generally safer to just use the flame shot by itself. But you know, it uh, it's a gimmick, not the best gimmick, but it is a gimmick, and you know you can get people with it occasionally. Moving on from there, she has uh, a move that she shares with Burn, Spark Rain. Right there. Can hit up to three times. Usually you're going to get two hits at the wall. Um, but it's really good. 
you know, just like Burns, it, it comes out pretty decently fast. You can aim it. You can catch people with the errant hits. Uh, one of the things that differs between her version and Burns is Burns has better startup. Regina gets better damage. So, again, it's a very good space control tool in general, just like Burn, right? You're going to use this quite a bit. Uh, it's one of her better uh, special moves. Moving on from there, we have Flare Burst. Flare Burst is her best... It's her best combo ender. It's also a really good tool to beat people trying to dash in on you, because it will catch them pressing anything. It causes this little animation here, where she dances around and sends the flames your way. Uh, I believe you can even cancel it into it. Not cancel into itself, but you can combo it into itself if you get it close to the corner for 420 damage. Blaze up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's best used as a combo ender, but you want to make sure that your combo will, you know... You want to make sure it will connect, right? Because if it doesn't, you just missed a chance to set something else up. And we'll go over what you can set up in the meantime. Uh, let's go after that. We've got the Flame Whip. So this is an interesting move. It has quite a bit of startup, right? But it leaves a trail of flames throughout the entire whip itself, and it can also hit up to three times, I believe. So the thing about the Flame Whip is you can actually curve it, you can aim it. After you input the command, you just hold the direction and the move will, like as it goes out, it will follow like, it will follow where you aim it to. Um, so the move's pretty interesting. It can get predictable, you don't want to spam it, but because it recovers as the flames come out, you can actually like do something like, oh, you set this up, they come in, flare burst, right? So that's really cool. It, it definitely is a very important part of Regina's game. But you, it's like a lot of her other stuff, you don't want to rely on it too much, but you want to use it smart. Uh, so yeah, flame whip, once again, pretty important, but not, not the most spammable thing. Okay. Next is half circle strong. This move could be better. You're probably only really going to use it in long range uh, combo enders, like long range wall bounces. You see it has quite a bit of startup. Like her flame shot, it has, I believe it's called napalm burst. Uh, like her flame shot, it has another gimmick. If you press strong at any point during the move, it will detonate the projectile. It does slightly less damage. 220 right there, to, compared to 280. But, you can do it, you know, whenever. Like, if your opponent's trying to get around it. And I believe she can even, like, detonate it, like, right in her face. Yeah, you just smash it, and she'll detonate it, like, as soon as possible. But, you know, not not, not the best move. You, you'll you probably want to stick to Flame Shot for your long-range stuff. But, if you can get the damage, and if you can get the confirm, you know. Couldn't hurt to throw it out once in a while. It's just, you know, not the most useful move. Uh, after that, we have her install, which is called Flame Chaser. And this one's pretty interesting. Sorry, that was Spark Rain. Back, forward, forward, and light. And you'll see here what makes Flame Chaser stand out as an install. Regina leaves a trail of fire behind her dashes. You can actually use this to pressure the opponent. You can use this to retreat and then follow up with, uh, you know, with a projectile if they try to chase you down. It's really useful. The downside of it is uh, if your opponent, like, you'll see what happens to the, let's see. you'll see what happens to the fire if, um, yeah, the fires will dissipate if uh, you get bursted, at, like if they, if they barrier you out or if they hit you. Uh, I think if they hit you, the, the install completely goes away. It's definitely got its uses, and you can actually pressure people with... Uh, if you slide dash up close, like right there. So yeah, it will do 160 damage uh, if it connects. So moving on from there, we have one more move to cover, and that's Atomic Burner. Quite a bit of startup. 80% meter, but it does. It, it's her super. It does 375 damage uh, at 100 base power. But, the problem with it is, as it has quite a bit of startup, it's really best used as a 
as a whiff punish and on like really slow stuff. Uh, I have seen some really good Reginas use it very, very well as a whiff punisher. But because you need 80% meter and, you know, Regina is going to use her meter for a lot better stuff, it's it's uh, it's going to be a little bit more important to to know how much meter to use. So moving on from that, I think we're pretty much done covering Regina. She is my favorite character, but like I said earlier, she is a uh, jack-of-all-trades, master of none. She doesn't really excel at any one thing, but she has a little bit of something for every, uh, for every area. For her close-up stuff, she has the bread and butter, which is, again, fantastic bread and butter. For long-range stuff, you know, Flame Shot's really good, Spark Rain's really good, it has great startup. And by the way, Spark Rain is safe, which is, you know, you can't argue with that. Like I said, it shares a lot of similarities with Burn's uh, version of it. And of course, you got the Flame Whip to sort of play those games. Uh, and because you can aim the Flame Whip a lot easier, you can, like, cover certain ground, right? So let's say you try to go up, you catch him with that. Uh, again, Regina, she definitely has the damage potential. But you need to you need to know how to play the game properly to really bring out the best in her. Uh, so yeah, again, best girl. Moving on from there, we're gonna cover Gates when we come back. Okay, let's talk about Gates. Uh, by the way, in case I forgot, Regina and Carlo both sit in the mid tier. Uh, with Regina being like low mid because she doesn't really have any dirty stuff. Carlo's like solid mid. He just has a solid, simple game plan. Doesn't really have too many problems. Um, Gates is considered by a number of people to be the worst character in the game. That being said, I have seen some really good Gates play. But when you pick him up, you're going to notice a few th problems that he has. For one, he is a heavyweight. Unlike, you know, we, we just covered Regina and Carlo. They're middleweight characters. They don't fly back that far that much. So on some level, you know, Gates will not fly back that much in combos. Uh, so that's a good thing. The problem is his mobility is severely lacking as you can see it takes me like a number of dashes to get like straight in one uh in one way right you know and uh for a lot of characters for a lot of characters they'll get in really quickly off a off a neutral dash gates is a little yeah and the other thing about gates is he, he's another kind of utility character um a lot of what he has makes him feel like a zoner, but he does actually a lot better up close. So let's go over his his let's go over his moves, and then we'll talk more in depth about him. This is his light attack. It's actually kind of decent. Uh, it's just better up close because a little harder to block up close, right? A little harder to deal with. Uh, the problem is if you do it from far away, it's really just an annoyance. It's very easy to just move to the side and deal with it. I'm actually going to set the other uh, gates to. Let's see, I'm going to set the other gates to... Yeah. Okay, so we'll go over that special in a second. So you'll see here, I'm literally just, like, moving. And this is a, one of the slowest characters in the game. Yeah. Um... One of the things, Gates has a lot of projectiles, right? But he can't really use them all that well. It, a lot of a lot of his stuff succeeding is pretty dependent on the opponent getting hit, and he doesn't necessarily have a lot of good ways to open people up. So yeah, his light attack, very easy to deal with if you're far away. Now he does have a pretty decent uh, strong, which is Tow Missile. And as you saw earlier, the Tow Missile actually has a homing property. It will sort of curve around and try to hit you. Unfortunately, you can't aim it. No matter which way like I press the direction, it'll always shoot it straight at my opponent. So that's actually a big downside for the move. Uh, but it does have its uses. It is, you know, it's a slow projectile, relatively speaking. But, eh, you know. Moving on from there, we have uh, Stun Spark. This move is a good defensive tool. And not so much a good offensive one because it has this big hitbox in front of uh, in front of Gates. But even then, if the opponent times everything out properly, they don't have to deal with it. Um, you don't want to use it as a combo ender, and here's why: the opponent recovers before you do from it if you use it a combo ender. So it's a bit of a strange move. It can eat projectiles in front of it, I believe, but it's just it just doesn't function properly. 
Now, we're going to go over into one of his best moves, Plasma Cannon. So as you saw there, Plasma Cannon is a half circle light and it freezes the opponent in place letting you, you know, get letting you get your offense in. Get you get your good stuff. Uh, it, it is actually one of the moves that actually makes Gates it's one of the best things he has because it comes out so fast, right? Unfortunately, if it gets blocked, he stays there like shaking like an idiot the whole time. Um, so it can be punished if it's blocked, but you can connect with it very easily off moves. All right, moving on from there, we've got G Cracker. This move is a little strange. It is, it's, it's like a slow projectile. If the projectile itself hits, it will like cause, uh, you see there it gets 260 damage, right? And it can potentially do a lot more because of the extra explosions like you saw right there. But you really want to throw this out as like a space control tool. You never really want to aim it at the opponent, in my opinion. Um, the command is forward, forward, uh, light, by the way. So, yeah, it's a bit slow. You're really only going to throw it out when you have other stuff that they have to deal with. Uh, next up, we've got all range missile. This is one of his supers. And... You see it has a ton of startup, and the damage is not, like, necessarily the best. So, this move on paper seems like it'd be a good space control tool. Unfortunately, because of its startup, that's not the case. There is a better way to use this, however. Hold on. Let's see if I can show it off properly. We're going to get a hard knockdown. Come on. How much meter does it even take? Jesus Christ, was that 80? Okay, yeah, it takes 80 meters. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to supercharge. Uh, ignore the damage that we get here. It's a little hard to do some of his stuff. I, I can't really set it up, but I'll give you I'll just give you the tell you what it does. So you it's a move you want to throw out on um on wake up when they're getting back down from like a knockdown. Right? Uh, the reason for that is that the missiles like will keep your opponent there in the meantime. And then you can set up with something like the plasma cannon, you can sh shoot the regular missile, you can shoot the rocket punch that we're gonna go over in a second. So the missiles, again, they're more of like, I guess you would say, wake up pressure. Uh, but by themselves, like if you just throw it out here, I, I've, I've actually seen people just dash through the missiles. Like just do a neutral dash and and hit gates because it's kind of random, the the trajectory that, they, that they're at. All right. So moving on, we have uh, Burst Arm, which is a half circle strong. And B Burst Arm has two follow-ups. One of them is... The double boost, which is a second punch. This one's the easiest one to do. All you have to do is another half circle and light, and it can you can do it at any point when they get hit. This one's a little harder because you have to do it before they get hit, and it is a half circle strong after the, the arm. And you have to time it. Yeah. So the damage is really good on that. 380 is basically super damage, right? And it only costs... Yeah, it only costs 60 meter. That's really good for 60 meter, all things considered. The problem is, like I said, if you the closer you do it, harder time you're going to get connecting it. Yeah, 268, by the way, for bread and butter is not bad. Uh, but yeah, by the way, that is Gates bread and butter. It's light, strong, and then the, the rocket punch. But yeah, I, I'm trying to get the... The follow up and it's just not working. Ironically, like the further out you are, the easier it is to get that extra damage. But it's it's tough. 
it's tough. So yeah, Gates, like I said, I've seen some good Gates, but the problem with this character is he just doesn't... He's a utility character with some of the worst, like, utility. Because of his speed, unfortunately, he can't really get him when he wants, and he does a lot better at close range than he does at far range. Uh, so yeah, that's Gates. I guess if you like him, if you think he's worth the time, give him a shot, but I personally, like, avoid this character like the plague. But again, like I said, I've seen some really good Gates play. Alright, when we come back, we will cover Keith, and that'll be the end of part two. Alright, covering Keith. This game's uh in the story he's the Magneto. You know, he wants to create a utopia for for the psychicers. Um he was the boss character of the first psychic force, and he returns here as a hidden character. Keith is a middleweight. And uh, as a result, he has decent speed, doesn't get knocked back too far. Uh, and he's kind of interesting, because you would think that he's more of a zoner, but he actually does really, really well up close. He has some really good stuff, so let's go over him. Pretty good uh, light attack, comes out pretty fast, right? Moving on from there, his strong attack is also quite good, Frigid Lance. As you saw there, that's one of the reasons Frigid Lance is so good. When it's blocked, it does multiple uh, it does multiple hits, even on a barrier. That's another move he has. We'll go over that one in a second. Um, so yeah, the Lance is a good projectile. has a bit of startup, but it tends to... Uh, I believe it curves toward the opponent. Could be wrong. Does it? No. Okay, but you can't aim it. Okay, so that's good. Frigid Spear. This move's really interesting. It has a bit of startup, but look what it does if you actually get the hit. Yeah. It causes... Okay, so I want to point something out. If they don't retreat barrier there, that return back from the wall does not count as a wall bounce. Meaning that his combos can get quite a bit of damage if the opponent is unable to do a retreat barrier. But it's not real because, as you can see, they get the retreat barrier, they'll be fine. But let's just, just, just for the sake of, uh, for the sake of argument, let's see how much damage you can potentially get. Three hundred thirty-nine. That's that's not even connecting into another. That's not even in connecting into anything. Three sixty-six. That's just off a throw. Uh, so yeah, the the thing about this move is, if it hits, you can you're free to move like when they're on the wall. The other thing about this move is, doesn't matter how far away from the wall you connect it. You can get that confirm like super easy. Now, obviously, like I said, you got a bit of startup, but it, again, no retreat barrier. They're gonna get hurt. They're gonna take a ton of damage. So frigid lance is frigid spear. Sorry, that's the one. Lance was the previous one. Frigid spear is really really cool. Uh, and uh, I think you can even set something up before they can even retreat barrier. Let's find out, shall we? Oh yeah, three sixty six. Let's see if they can retreat barrier off this. Yeah. Yeah, that beat out retreat barrier. That's pretty good. So yeah, Keith is pretty good. Every time I've seen this character, he's pretty good. So moving on from there, um, we've got Frigid Prison. This is a half circle light. And this freezes the opponent in place. Simple as that. I believe you actually have enough time to go for the... Uh, see believe you have enough time yeah, maybe not I'm not actually sure what the better confirm would be here maybe a throw regardless you freeze your opponent in place okay there you go throw 135 damage there's got to be something better you can do I just don't play this character so I'm not really entirely sure Okay, the move that actually a lot of people can't stand. This is Frigid Shell. 
this is his install. So the thing about this install is, let's let's watch watch watch. Come on, why aren't you shooting at me? Okay, so so you'll notice the opponent stopped shooting at me. I wonder why. I guess even the computer is too scared of this. <laughs> um, well, if they're not going to shoot at me, just going to have to explain it. So this barrier, this install that he has, it beats all projectiles. Literally makes every projectile attack in the game completely useless against uh, Keith, meaning the opponent has to get in on him. Physical attacks will beat out uh, the frigid shell, but this move is, is it's it's insane. Keith is he's actually not like at the top of the top tier, but he is in the top five. Uh, so yeah, if you're gonna play Keith for 60 meter, you don't have to deal with projectiles. It's pretty good. And finally, we're gonna go into his super, which is Blizzard Tooth. All right, this is also his best bread and butter ender, if I remember correctly. By itself, 360 damage, not bad. In a combo, uh, that's not it. I believe his combo is light, light, strong, but I want to make sure. Yeah, 317. It's pretty good, it just obviously takes a bit of damage. I don't know if that was real, but it looked cool as hell. Cool. That's a lot of Keef, man. A lot of Keef. I, like, I think his bread and butter is is light, light, strong. It probably is. All right, we didn't even go over this. This is Keef's uh, burst move, which is called Frigid Spine. It's pretty good at beating people trying to get in on him. It doesn't necessarily have the range that Carlos does, but it does have better range than uh, Regina's. But you don't really want to... Like, I, I don't think it's good in... You don't get max damage with it in combos. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. That's basically Keith. Um, one of the best characters in the game. Uh, and I would actually strongly recommend him. He's pretty easy to pick up and play. He has literally a game-breaking install. Uh... <laughs> Just like certain characters, like zoners have a pretty hard time against him because of the frigid shell. And his steam, you, you're hearing his theme, his theme's pretty sick. But yeah. Uh, and honestly, this move is just really cool. That's. Okay, I wanna point this out. This is. That's super damage, right? Like 366 for 40% meter. Let's see how much the super does by itself. 360. Yeah, it's if you know if you know how to play this guy, he can he can hurt really hard and just kind of like a control character. Now that being said, he does better up close. He might seem like a zoner, but he actually does really well up close. Uh, par you know, frigid shell. Frigid shell is one thing though. Like if you can get frigid shell, and you're playing against a zoner. Like, what's Patty gonna do? You know, she has like no up close stuff. Uh, Setsuna is another example. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you for watching part two. This covers pretty much all the Noah characters. And in part three, which is the final part, I will cover all the army characters. And that is Setsuna, Gudeth, Emilio, and Wong. Those last two being the top two characters in the game. So look forward to that. And you guys have a good night.